Alright, this is sadly still a best of one, but it is one of the last best of ones we're going to be casting today. Doom, you know what this also means? What's it mean, Rifkin? It also means it's one of the last best of ones of 2013 for the Zotac European <laughs> Cup. Ooh. It's it's a really happy, but at the sad time, a really sad thing to see. Oh, man. All right, well, Spotty here at the top left corner of the map, playing for Alien Invasion. He was one of the first Protoss players that Doom and I fell in love with in Wings of Liberty. It is the pink Protoss known as Kerr. And the crowd goes wild. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the lower right-hand corner of Star Station in the red, the Zerg player from Team Acer, the Queen of Blades, it is Scarlet. Yeah, and uh, very much looking forward to the quarterfinals. So quick explanation, because a lot of people are unfamiliar with the Zotac Cup. Maybe it's your first time ever tuning in, you're here just because of Scarlet. But to explain how this works, basically, uh, none of the quarterfinal matches can start until all the quarterfinal matches are ready to start. It's a unique trait that Zotac has. I don't know the reasoning behind it. I don't know if there's any real good reason for it, but it's how they run things. So uh, until this match finishes, again, this is the last best of one to be played out. Until this one finishes, we can't tell you who's playing against who, but Scarlet's teammate Nurchio. We got Burning from Samsung Galaxy. Revival. There's a lot of really good players who'll be playing in the quarterfinals, and that's when the best of threes begin. So uh, if what we, what we do at Base Ray TV is we always put a straw poll in chat. Now we are working on of a severely massive delay at the moment, but uh, we'll still put the straw poll in chat. You guys can help us pick who you want to see in the quarterfinals, who you want us to cast. So if you're a big fan of Scarlet, if you're a big fan of Kerr, whoever makes it out of this game, you make sure to let us know. One of my favorite things about Base Ray TV, we let the people decide. It's a, it's a very democratic atmosphere we have going here. Yeah, definitely try to embrace the aspect of community to the best of our capabilities, but. Yeah, man. Kerr with a gateway opener, nothing too surprising. Without that second gas, probably is looking to take that natural expansion. Star Station is a bit of a fickle map, too, for fighting with Protoss. Uh, Scarlet could open up quite greedy here, actually. Uh, go for that third real quick. I mean, it's not before the pool, but it's still really fast. And this is crazy, because she didn't she didn't do this last game. She, she, went, she delayed her third till about the seven and a half minute mark. So really playing to the map, I don't know if she's necessarily playing to the opponent, but uh, this makes sense on, on Star Station because you're going to be able to get over to that third base way quicker than you would, um, say, on Belcher Vestige. So uh, we'll have to see what she transitions into from here, though. This is, of course, going to have to be gasless for now. She simply wouldn't have the, the minerals to put uh, into taking one of these Vespine geysers. Uh, and Kerr, on the other side of things here, is... Doing what appears to be relatively standard for Protoss, I'm guessing, these days. Rifkin is going for this early gateway opener. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've seen Forge Expands, and it's not simply because the Oracle is OP you now you want to get it out a little bit faster, but because gateways provide a lot more utility. Having the Mothership Core out earlier, it's just... it's better. <laughs> What it boils down to the mobility of it's quite nice. It could dash the damage it needs to versus links, and uh, Scott, of course, any couple links across the map already to poke. And they get poked by the mothership core. Yeah, <laughs> not a lot can really get done. Mothership core <laughs> doesn't. The thing about it is, like, it doesn't have the most damage on it, but it's got enough damage on it, right? It takes fast enough to get the job done. Uh, Kerr. The one thing we could really talk about this guy, I haven't... Uh, here's what's frustrating. So, Doom and I fell in love with this player together. We were casting him, I think it was like Daybreak vs. Bly, right? You remember that game? Like, that was the game that Kerr was like the standout player to us. Then it's it, definitely Daybreak, yep. Yeah. Well, the problem was like, Heart, Heart of the Swarm came out and he disappeared for a while. He recently, like, two or three months ago got back into playing more full-time. I don't know if he's... Uh, sadly, I haven't got to cast him a lot in that time period, but Kerr was a guy who could make the impossible happen. I'm not kidding you guys. To, to explain this situation to you real quick, all right, the setting is Daybreak. He goes for a Cybercore quickly, puts it on the front of his wall, Bly with an early Roach all in, knocks the Cybercore down before Warp Tech even finishes, and somehow Kerr comes back from that game for a victory. Like, that's why we like this guy a lot. I have no idea if he can still play to the same strengths against someone like Scarlet, because Scarlet is quite frankly a very, uh, I don't know, it, it just, it feels like Scarlet is always going to be Goliath in the David vs. Goliath series, you know what I mean? That's the way it's been recently, man. She's she's looked unstoppable, and she looks insanely creative to boot. Like, it's not just doing something predictable. It's doing these things that you just blow your mind when you see them. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kerr is definitely the type of player who he, he really knows that Protoss is, is the race that needs to be cost efficient, and he makes them those units as cost efficient as he possibly can. And going for Blink in this situation, that's just going to help him out even further. Uh, I was looking at his build initially, thinking it might have been a DT build, um, but he did opt to go for this Blink. So we're, we're going to see some it's, pressure incoming in the next couple of minutes. It's sure. really curious to see Blink, but what I'm thinking Kerr wants to do is utilize the ledge here at the third base, somewhat similar to that the Terrans used it to drop up and down. Mm -hmm. But instead of dropping up and down, Blinking up and down. Because otherwise, Blink is not really your go-to. It's great for when you finally get Colossus out on the field, but... Uh, ooh. Dude, you weren't entirely wrong. It is going to be a Dark Shrine coming up as a follow-up to this, curiously enough. Great. So these Spore Crawlers for Scarlet are going to have to stay up, but it does look like Kurt is going to drop. Well, I guess that was a spine. Oh, he reels um, the, the blink, blink, though. Yep. And that was kind of strange in an effort to change that small handful of blings, but... Maybe he just really wants to eliminate them off the field so they don't come back and try to take down that pylon unsuspectingly, but... There we go. Blinking forward. A lot of links charging through. That probe is going to survive. There's actually that's, that's really huge. There's great areas to take fights around here too, because of course Kirk can keep blinking around, but unfortunately uh, will lose this pylon. But as you said, probe lives, so another pylon going to come down. And I didn't first blood. Whatever. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm, I'm terrible. Uh, anyways, we do have a lot Second. of. Well, what we do is have a lot of static defense coming down here at the third. Scarlet definitely expecting Kurt to finish, follow up with this, but he's deciding to pull back, realizing, like, oh, all right, she's got a lot of lings. She knows what I was coming with. It's not going to work. Let's go for whatever the next plan is. Uh, however, Scarlet putting down a uh, Spire and Doom, this is kind of like the trademark thing. Like, once Scarlet gets Mutalisks, you can't stop her. And with the composition here, those are just going to be insanely difficult to deal with. Uh, I mean, Kurt is going to be getting his plus two, but it's still... A long ways out, 150 seconds at least. And uh, Blink Stalkers are decent against Mutalist, but this is so many Blings on the field for Scarlet. 77. And uh, I mean, I don't care how quick you are with your Blink Stalkers. If there's that many Lings out there, they're going to catch up to you eventually and cause a ton of damage, like ruin your day type of damage. And this is also preventing Kerr from taking the third base. So as we go further and further in the game, the Mutalists are going to pin him into his base at, at the main and the natural. The Lings are going to prevent him from making any advances on the field. This is just this is looking kind of rough here for Kerr in this situation, to be completely honest. Well, the one upside he's got going for him is the fact that he did get Blink out earlier means that when Scarlet does eventually make those Mutalists, they will be a little bit easier to deal with. Not easy, but easier. <laughs> Cool. Uh, that's a hell of a lot of lings though dancing around the middle of the map and Kerr might have a good position in this watchtower Hell he can blink down if he needs to but even then look at this. Yeah, Scarlet already wrapped him behind goes to the recall instead Great move tactic. Well, moving into the main base too here, yeah, but Scarlet's already prepared with lings in Oh, defense. he needs We're to get this in range though he needs and to this get is the shrine. Weapon, man. Or sorry, the spire. He needs to get that spire down quick. There are 10 mules coming up with the plus one upgrades. Delay this is gonna be huge. Nice. Good pick off here out of Kerr. This also pulls all the links back home to defend, buying him a lot more safety back at home. This warp prism absolutely worth its weight in gold, Doom. Yeah, that was a that was a slick move there from Kerr, and as a response back at home, Rook and throwing down two Stargates, uh, gonna try to pump Phoenix out to try to uh, uh, cut off any any Mulisk advances that are gonna be coming forward here, because the Spire's still about 70 seconds out, uh, but Scarlet looks like she's gonna go for it, Rook can hear tons of links flooding across the map, and the Mutalists are gonna be so annoying on the mineral lines for Kerr. Unfortunately, the Immortals here can't. Oh. He can't just blink away with the Stalkers. The Immortals will be abandoned. Needs to keep a lot of the Stalkers alive because while the Lings are scary, the Mutalists are even scarier. And here comes some more Stalkers blinking up to the high ground. Gonna have to sacrifice those Immortals. But looks like Kerr should be able to hold this onslaught. I think he's going to. Uh, the Mutalists are looking kind of confused here, but they are taking out a good amount of Stalkers. Additional warp in from Kerr. Maybe it may be too much for Scarlet to actually contend with, but Phoenix production has started back here in the, in the, in the natural for Kerr. Scarlet is taking her fifth base. She's just got to be like, wait, I have mutalisks. Why aren't you dead? <laughs> that, that flood of lings, though, man, I, I got to give it to Kerr. With no zealots, he actually held that quite nicely. Normally, uh, of course, when you get a flood of lings surrounding stalkers like that, even with blink, they have a trouble. They, it gets, they don't attack fast enough to deal with that, that many lings, right? Yeah, good defense again from Kerr. Desperately trying to get that third base up while the mutalisks are ravaging this mineral line, there's simply not enough phoenixes out to really contend with this, and two are going to try to prod in here oh. as the zealots... Oh, the zealots are being surrounded by lings! But, looks like the Mutalist numbers are starting to be herded and thin just a tiny bit. Kerr, of course, investing in more phoenixes behind this. Scarlet has no means to actually break this wall. Those couple of zealots 
holding quite nicely, and while Curse not exactly getting the better end of these engagements, these are attacks that would have absolutely killed any other player at this point. There's the photon on the charge going down for Kerr. The Phoenixes are trying to gonna get are going to try to get on top of those links. And meanwhile, here Rick in this third base is about halfway finished here. But Scarlet, is she gonna make that the next point of attention with the links? Nope, just gonna take down that pylon. And I think Kerr's gonna hold this off. It is still realistically though, three bases to five. Scarlet did remake that spire. Plus one damage is finishing up. She's been making corruptors behind this too. Of course, the corruptors aren't here to do a lot of damage, but to soak the hits from those phoenixes, allowing her to maneuver and dance with the mutals a little more efficiently, a little more effectively. 25 of them in total. This is not gonna be easy to deal with. Um, one of the biggest issues here for Kerr, the pro count is 44 to Scarlet's 84 drones. Her economy is out of control. We're can doubling what Kerr currently has. And with this addition of these corruptors, these Phoenix are just going to be... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. This is going to be just a mass air army from here, and yeah, GG, yeah. Kerr, tapping out. Scarlet moving on to the grid stage of attack the Yukon. Yeah, and I believe that would be the uh, the last match. Should be, at least. Uh, as, uh, even though the brackets weren't updated, the other players did finish out this game, so... Uh, yeah, well played. You guys will probably be hearing this by the time I've already spammed it in chat, but we'll get a straw poll going as soon as we can. Oh, you're right, Rifkin. You're right. It is done. Complete. You want me to announce who we got? Should we Should we throw it out there? Wait, is the grid already... Oh, yeah. Talk about oh. who's qualified. Yeah, go for it. All right. We got Revival coming in the first seed here. Spart 